microdosing psilocybin mushrooms. Is it worth the trip? And stick around for the story about my trip at the end of this video. From the Silicon Valley tech elite, right down to moms, young moms in Ohio, more and more people have discovered psilocybin mushrooms and other hallucinogenic agents, microdosing though, not the full trip. We have to discuss today the details of this. First and foremost, I'll be discussing psilocybin today, but we have to look at the history of classic hallucinogenic agents like LSD. Lysergic acid diethylamide discovered and synthesized in 1938 by the Swiss chemist, Dr. Albert Hoffman, at that time Sandoz, now Novartis Labs, been around for a long time, where this chemist took a little too much of LSD and went on his magic bike ride home. And that launched into the 1960s, the hallucinogenic time, as everyone knows. But we know that the Fed shut it down and now it's opening up. Did you know that back in the Cold War, the CIA used this drug, LSD, via a project called MK Ultra in the 1960s, they used it on people experimentally for mind control and information gathering, right? Cold War CIA, that's super cool. Of course, there are other psychedelics, mescaline, the peyote cactus, and MDMA that some people are gonna say is really not a classic hallucinogenic like the psilocybin mushroom and LSD or like peyote mescaline. But let's go into the mechanism of action. So it has direct effects obviously on the brain, stimulating the neocortex, that's the outer aspect of your cerebral cortex, that's the thinking brain. This is the new brain, the upper brain versus the limbic brain that I talked about before with testosterone and androgens and sex and drives underneath us all. It stimulates the serotonergic hallucinogen receptor 5, HT2A receptor. Now, with stimulation of these receptors in your brain, you have to consider the dose-dependent effects. Full-blown dose, heavy dose of this drug, psilocybin, not to mention the other agents, you're gonna get full-blown, absolute tripping effects out-of-body experiences. And that's what people look for when they take that dose, when they're taking that amount of the drug, especially psilocybin. Now we've looked at about 10 years where people are microdosing the small, small doses of these mushrooms. And they have sensations of peace, being grounded, more calm, mindfulness, hyper-focus, and increased creativity. Thousands of people report improvements in depression, symptoms with OCD, and definitely men that have ADD, those are the tech guys, super focused control and activity, with ADD improvement in symptoms, apart from using drugs and other stimulatory drugs like Adderall or methylphenidate. People seem more focused or more motivated and when you look at the moms in Ohio, for an example, they, they've said that they're more tolerant to others. They're more resistant to get angry towards their young children and snappy and not to overreact aggressively. And they're just more tolerant on these mushrooms. Microdose, microdosing. The legal situation with this, I checked into, is it's still illegal. These are still illegal federal agents. However, several states have moved to decriminalize these agents, as you all know. 
And recently, the FDA has cleared some of these drugs for breakthrough therapy, mainly for refractory depression and OCD, people with OCD. Now, these are under medical supervision and with large doses. This is not the microdosing. But what are those doses? The microdosing doses, if you will, magic mushrooms. Now, you got to be so careful with this stuff because even myself, I look at this and I go, wow, why wouldn't I want to do some of this to get out here in nature and to really, really enjoy it, which I do, but can I enjoy it more on my mountain bike if I'm microdosing? So the doses are going to be about 100 to 300 milligrams of, again, it's real, the real mushroom ground up and you have to be able to really know this. So be very careful. I'm certainly not going to do this without help from a true, true expert. You got to be super careful in this dose because if you overdose this, you could have a bad trip and that's definitely not going to be cool. What are the side effects though? We got to go into the side effects here. There's no question that if you have significant anxiety, panic attacks of any type, general anxiety disorder, which so many people have this, you can't tease out depression and anxiety. It's like Velcro, it's gonna stick. You can't tease this stuff out. If you have bipolar depression and you have any bipolar mania and you take this drug, whoo, I did a lot of research for this, guys, and I've talked to a lot of patients over the years, apart from the steroids. This is a steroid mind issue, right? So that's right off the bat, straight up warning, that if you have any severe issues with moods, really, you really want to stay away from this stuff at all. This stuff may end up being good for people that just have moderate depression, just kind of tired of life, and the ADD guys, absolutely. Er focus and creative and cranking. We have to watch it. The issue is going to be, apart from these severe side effects, tolerance. Does it build tolerance in the central nervous system that we know steroids? That's why guys stack and change steroids all the time because of the tolerance and the, mus the skeletal muscle. So, and I'm concerned. This is my concern. When you stop it, if you do it, we know people have been doing it for months and for even years, like anything else, I have to give concern. Once you stop it, when you're tired of doing it, or if you can't do it, are you depleted of serotonin? Because it's working through those pathways, the happy pathway, the serotonin pathway. What happens? And here's my story. I was 19 years old. I was getting ready to go to school one morning with a buddy of mine, SUNY Oswego upstate New York, kind of like this. And this friend of mine was known to do some LSD and he dropped a little LSD on my tongue. And yeah, that wasn't cool, man. But he kind of threw a beer at me and he said, we're going on the bus today, but we're not going to school. I ended up on that bus and elsewhere for about 36 hours, obviously didn't sleep. And we were in the woods, we hiked, we did great things in nature, and it was pretty wild. And I don't think I had a bad trip, but it was a long haul. And at the end of the whole thing, I ended up back at my dorm room, so exhausted that I missed at least two days of school. I obviously didn't get to work out, and I slept for about two days. If it wasn't for getting up to go to the bathroom, I remember that. So that's full on tripping. So that's something that you got to be careful with, right? The mind altering drugs. Does it bring your IQ up? Does it really stick? And what do you do with that? Is microdosing going to be something sustainable? That's my word to you today. Maybe it is. We have to look at the psychiatric experts for this. That's the end of my presentation. I want comments to come out now. Give me your comments. Are you microdosing? Have you microdosed? What are your doses? Everyone needs to know. This is openness and this is, this is truth and education. What have you used? Does it work for you? What are your symptoms for depression, 
for OCD, for ADD? Was it a bad side effect? Are you still on it? What's your plan? How does it affect your training? How does it affect your relationships with your kids? How about your health? There's some concerns that it could affect the heart over long term, like Fen Fen did. So I need to have all the comments, guys. Thank you so much. I really hope this helps out here in nature for you guys to think about this for the quality of life. Thank you.